Call to order the uh, Kingston Springs City Board of Commissioners meeting. May we all rise and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. John, will you please call the roll? Carolyn Park? Here. Tony Gross is absent. Mike Hargis? Here. Glenn Murray? Here. Bob Stoller? Here. We have a quorum. Do we have a motion to approve the July 21st, 2022 public hearing? Meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Motion to approve the July 21st, 2022 City Commissioner's meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Motion to approve the August 4th, 2022 public hearing meeting minutes. All in, uh, do we have, have a motion? Do we have approval? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve the August 4th, 2022 special called city commissioners meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve the August 18th, 2022 City Commissioner's meeting agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Do we have any adjustments? Yes, sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Announcements from commissioners? Nothing for me. Thank you. Nothing for me. Commissioner? Um, I wanted to give kudos to um, citizens that live on Webridge Road and South Harpeth and Forest Drive and uh, Sugar Hill Lane, I believe it is, for their putting their collective voices together and uh, getting step one done and getting Forest uh, Drive put into the Williamson County Road System. They did a great job. So kudos. My thoughts and prayers for the mayor who's out running a 100-mile marathon out in Colorado. I do hope he returns in good health, so I don't have to do this next month. <laughs> Community input and concerns. We have department reports. Um, I don't think I have anything to add. I do, I take that back, I have one thing to add. Commissioner Clark had asked about fire hydrants and uh, fire hydrant inspections in Kingston Springs. Chief Ivy and I have talked, uh, we've had discussions with uh, Bill Zimmerman, who's the manager of Second South Cheatham Utility District, uh, and we're working with Mr. Zimmerman uh, to uh, make sure that uh, we have what they want and what we need as far as inspections go. So uh, we'll continue that conversation, and once we have a process in place, then we'll put it in action. And I think that, that was brought up um, by Gosh, two years ago when I first started trying to find out about this, and then uh, some neighbors at a July 4th party had wanted to know on our road we have like, I believe, three hydrants, and uh, even though we didn't see them, had seen them get service or flushed, not flowed, but flushed. And so I posed the question of when our fire hydrants actually get inspected. And I, um, I don't know if you have this from Brent Stewart. That's their fire hydrant checklist that they go through. So our neighbors were just kind of concerned about when our fire hydrants were being looked at and uh, screws checked and valves and, and pressure tested and whatnot. So that, that's what, that was the impetus for that. So thank you. You're welcome. Legal updates. I don't have any time. Right. Unfinished business. 14A, motion to approve. Change order one, safe routes to school projects. TDOT, pin one, two, three, seven, four, nine. Finished business. Zero zero for a revised increase in construction costs in the amount of one hundred sixty-nine thousand two hundred eighty-two. Tables from the August fourth, twenty twenty-two meeting. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I was having some technical difficulties. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The change order is still making its way through T dot divisions. It's at their construction division now. They had requested some additional information. That additional information has been submitted to them. We hope to have an answer anytime soon. We 
hope to have an answer prior to today, but we don't have an answer, an official answer from TDOT on whether they are accepting this change order or not. So my request is to table this item until the September meeting. Motion to table to the September meeting. Second. May I ask one question on that, John? Yes. Um, do you recall, I'm sure you don't know, not the top of your head, but what was the amount of the second bidder that was on there? Was that? I don't recall off the top of my head. I just wonder if it was $169,000 more or if it was less than, than that would be. I, I don't yeah, recall. It was from September 2021, so. Right. Yes, I can find that out for okay. sure. Just be interesting. Okay. Has the cost of uh, lumber and concrete come down so? Since they submitted this change order? It, um, by the time the change order is approved or not approved by TDOT, there could be some changes in cost, yes. This lumber is down about 25% from, from its highs. Now, that was about the time that they submitted the change order. Mm -hmm. So, we might want to, and TDOT's probably aware of that, but we might want to touch base with TDOT and make sure that they're whisper in their ear about hey you need to check current prices on some of the materials that are listed yes TDOT has a, a list of empirical data that they use as far as uh, volumes and, and uh, equipment and all, all that kind of stuff so yeah i'll follow up with them to make sure okay we had a second all yeah. in favor aye, aye. motion passes 15 new business 15A, motion to approve resolution 22-010, Kingston Springs surplus policy. This uh, resolution doesn't change our current policy, uh, but it does codify that policy. There was nothing that we saw of, um, that we had in writing that outlined the current uh, surplus policy that we had or surplus process that we had. So that's what this resolution is for. So did we recently change the amount which you could approve? That, right? that was for uh, that was donations to the town. That was donations, yes, sir. not surplus. So yes, every surplus sir. I have to do has to come in here. Yes, sir. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? Aye. Uh, Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. 15B, motion to approve resolution 22-011, discontinuation of the town's TCRS probationary period. So TCRS is a Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System, and our current policy for participation for new employees with TCRS requires a six-month waiting period after hire. Uh, staff feels that waiving the six-month wait is an easy way to add value for any potential new hires or employees. Uh, and this action was actually recommended by our TCRS representatives as other municipalities are moving in this direction and they felt that it might be a benefit to the town if we moved in this direction as well. Do you want to institute a six month waiting period? No sir, we have a six month waiting period now and we'd like to waive that six month waiting period so that new employees are eligible for uh, uh, entrance into the Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System upon hire. And that's something they contribute to as soon as? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have a motion to approve. Motion to approve resolution 22-011. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. 15C, motion to approve resolution 22-012, adopting amended personal policy for the town of Kingston Springs. Okay, um, so additional review of the MTAS selected verbiage, specifically in section 6.3 that deal with personnel records. After from some additional review, we asked some clarification questions to MTAS, uh, and their legal department requested we confer with the State Open Records Council on the language that's in there related to the specific guidelines on how confidential information is provided to law enforcement upon request. This is something that we would really like to hammer out and get to the bottom of to make sure that we're following um, the state's uh, recommendations and requirements concerning open records. So because of this, staff is asking that we defer this 
action until the September meeting, so we'll have a definitive answer. And we'd like to use this time if there are any questions uh, concerning the updated personnel policy that uh, we can then take back and, and modify if needed. So 6.2 is about the driver's license? 6.2 is about uh, personal information um, and personnel records and what needs to be and can be supplied or redacted by uh, uh, law enforcement questions. What page, the, is it, what page is it on there? 36. I'm looking at 6.2. I don't see that. 36. If you look at page 38, if you look at page 38, it contemplates, okay. uh, item number one, contemplates giving over properly identified, do we, giving over confidential okay. information to law enforcement without a warrant. And so I think that's within the whole gamut of making okay. sure that we're handing out things as we have to and should. And to assure that we're doing the correct thing, um, we contacted NTAS Legal, NTAS Legal, and referred us to Open Records Council, and so that's our next step is to clarify that with Open Records okay. Council. So we're just going to sure. refer it to you get an answer from Open Records? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Motion to defer. Motion to defer. Second. Are we going to contemplate questions now or wait till September? Probably, if there's a great deal of questions and, and all, and unless you, it's a question you want to discuss about what needs to be in, or if it's just yeah, it's questions, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, would it be easiest if you and I got together and with John? And well, well some things? of them are, are, are not so many questions as a couple of them are, are opinions. I'm sorry, are, are, are opinions of, about the policy. So I mean, I think this would be the appropriate time to make it easier on us, so my version <laughs> for sure. So. So you've got a you've got a motion and a second, but we have a commissioner that would like to have a discussion. So I think open yeah, for discussion. Discussion, open for discussion. Mm -hmm. Since my background in the last seven years, of my career was in HR and legal, so I had a lot of questions about policies. So since I've, I've done some policies before, but the one first question I had was on page eight with the breaks and lunches. And uh, in the last policy, it was 8.5 hour day with a half an hour unpaid lunch, and this um, contemplates an eight hour day with still an unpaid lunch. So are our employees working 37.5 hours? And it doesn't matter to me one way or another, if it's 37.5, or if it's 40 hours with a paid lunch, I think it needs, needs to say that. I mean, that's, that's fine, you know, if they want to get a, if we want to pay a lunch, that's good too. But I think if it, otherwise it needs to say it's 37.5 hours. I'm sorry, Carolyn, what uh, number were you on? The work day, eight, eight hour, eight page eight. Yeah, the last personnel policy uh, was 8.5 hours with a one half hour unpaid lunch and this one says an eight hour day with a half hour unpaid lunch would make 7.5 or 37.5 would do not 40 hours and everything else in the rest of the policy contemplates a 40 hour work week yeah so to, to your point nothing has changed so the employees still work technically an 8.5 hour day so it's an eight hours work day and a half hour lunch so um, I would take that it needs to be changed back to if the last one called out 8.5 hours yeah. then this one should call out 8.5 then as well so it's an eight hour work day for a 40 hour work week with a half hour unpaid lunch on each day right yes okay the other question from Martha Brooke was basically toward you in the beginning of the employment section, recruitment and selection. Do you think there should possibly be an EEOC section there about, you know, the, we are an EEO employer committed to non discrimination upon hiring, like the section that, that heads up that entire recruitment and selection section? Sure. I think we've got that covered first and foremost on page three, uh, third paragraph of the policy itself. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, Carolyn, what page okay. number were you on? It was just on a page 10, the beginning of recruitment and selection section. I didn't need, need to know if it needed to be spelled out in that section as well. I mean, it's, it's not hard to, to duplicate it yeah. in there. It's in, it's in the body of the personnel policy further down. I thought it was in the employment section, but it, it is in here again. 
Um, so the policy of the town King Springs to provide equal employment opportunity to all employees and applicants for employment. No person shall be discriminated against. So that's a whole section of suggested language, I guess. She's wishing for it to be in another. Also, yeah. repeat. If that, if that suffices, I mean, I'm just okay. making a suggestion. Ke what? Kelly found, I knew I'd read it a second mm -hmm. time. It's, uh, if you look at page 11, mm -hmm. the bottom, uh, second to last paragraph, got the EESC language in there again. If your preference is to put it up at the beginning of the recruitment selection. It's just so question. I didn't, I didn't know if you thought it needed to be there. Just I think to, it, there's no requirement about where. It just has to be in there. Right. So, okay. So we already have it in there twice. Good. Okay. All right. I'll pay you more. Page 15. I said a question about employee grievances, where it says disciplinary actions, promotions, demotions, and transfers are not grievable. But what if the actions are claimed are claimed to be because of discrimination or retaliation? At that point, then <coughs> they they would have an EEOC. Oh right, I realize that, but it's, it's not in there. I was wondering, but at the end, you should put like the use of this procedure does not preclude any victim of discrimination um, to pursuing other legal remedies and have the EEOC and the Tennessee Human Rights Commission in there. Sure, we can. So people know where to go. I can send you this too. And the other um, question in that uh, section on page 16, it talks about the grievance, um, writing the grievance with the immediate supervisor. What if the grievance is against that supervisor? It's not spelled out that they can skip. I know later on in the, in the body of the policy and procedures, it talked about sexual harassment, and they're allowed to skip and go to a different person. So I was wondering if, if this section needs to spell that out as well, that they can skip if it's their supervisor. I guess I would, when I was going through this, uh, I had seen step three where it says the issue cannot be resolved by the department head employee may request in writing a meeting with the city manager. Um, you know, if you would prefer the council, I'm sorry, the commission's uh, position on this would be that we need to add a step in where if it involves the immediate supervisor, then it can go straight to the yeah. city manager. Otherwise, you're not going to take it to your supervisor if they're always yeah, harassing your uh, have a grievance against them. Well, I mean, it does provide for that in step three, right? I mean, right, but the first two steps talk about the grievance taking to your immediate supervisor, and nobody's going to do that if it is the supervisor. So the department head really can't resolve it because the employee's not going to bring it to them. Well, but in step three, it says the issue still cannot be resolved by the department head. That's the supervisor department head or the... Mm -hmm. well, you go first as <coughs> the supervisor, second to the department head, right? Right, but if I have a problem with my supervisor, I'm not bringing the complaint against the supervisor to them. Yeah. Just going to add in the same step that's later on the policy about harassment. I guess it works to spell it out. I think um, on page 18, that someone who's working, only working 90 days, will be getting a week's vacation. I have a question to John. Yes. That's usually somebody's probationary period, not to get a week's vacation after they have to work for 90 days. We are trying to retain uh, and attract as many uh, viable candidates as possible, uh, as you can see. And I think I listed in uh, the email that I sent, um, the surrounding municipalities have process or policy that is either similar or more advantageous than that. So we're trying to uh, make our uh, policy as attractive. Do we have open positions that aren't being filled? At, not at the moment. Well, yes, we will have very soon. Right. I, I just find that to be a lot, especially when 
we offer 14 holidays and we offer a, a lot of amenities besides that. We do. What? Yeah, we have 11 and, and we're asking. One well, we get two, two and we get two floaters. Mm -hmm. so it'll be 13 uh, if this passes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else has a hard time with that. I just find a hard time for 90 days to get a week's vacation. Since we're usually in the private sector, that's a probationary period. I personally have faith in, in our city manager to make a decision that's necessary for the. But it's also money. I have faith in our city manager to make a decision on such an item. We did change the verbiage in that just a little bit. Um, after Martha Brookwood got it, and we'll update it when we send it out. But it just basically says after your 90 days, you'll accumulate one week, and then after completion of the year, that's when you'll see your anniversary one will come along. I'm sorry, your anniversary? Your anniversary hire date, mm -hmm. that's when you'll start accumulating the rest of the time after the first year. Okay, that makes more sense. So after 90 days, one week, which is 40 hours. Then after the completion of one year, you'll get 80 hours. And then every year thereafter, right. until you reach five, so on and so forth. But it's 80 till you reach the completion of the fifth year, right? Yes. Okay. And then after completion of the 11 years, you'll get... Okay. So you get it on your employment anniversary. Yes, sir. Triggered by that. Okay. I have a question about the holidays. It looks like 14 to me. We got 12 and two floaters. I thought we had 13. 10 on the front. I didn't miss count it. 14. And I think I might have put it in that email one too. Page 42, just a typo. The yeah, city of town of Elizabeth Kingpin. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Yes, and we, there were a few things that Martha Brooke had caught in her review, and so once we um, make these changes and update to present, we'll have that corrected as well as a couple of other things. That are in there. Well, we got a motion to defer. Table defer. It. Defer. defer. Never can't figure out which one's the right one. To defer. We have a motion to, to yeah, defer. We have a second. Have, who did the first one? Bob. Mm -hmm. Bob did, and I second it. Second and second one. Table this until the next one. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That is table. Thank Deferred. You. Deferred. Deferred, yes. Moving on. 15D. Motion for assurance. Issuance of a Certificate of Compliance to Sachin Patel, Sahara, Inc., for forwarding to the Tennessee Alcoholic Beverage Commission related to proposed liquor store at 121B, Lyben Hills Road, Kingston Springs, Tennessee. I'll take explanation on that. Uh, under state statute, a person who is uh, requesting a license from the state to have a packaged liquor store has to have a Certificate of Compliance some people say certificate of character or whatever, uh, from the town indicating that it has run appropriate background checks and that they have complied with all local laws and ordinances. You know, they're not too close to a church or school or something along those lines. And so uh, Mr. Patel has provided his application. Um, did the national background check come in? <coughs> not yet, no. Okay. So this will need to be passed contingent upon 
it, it, the state statute requires a local statewide background check and a national background check and so that is still waiting to come in and I understand that there's not been a final certificate of occupancy that has been uh, delivered uh, to the facility but from what I understand from John everything else has been complied with under the resolutions and ordinances and all of the town so tonight uh, based upon the information that has been submitted to John and the background checks, you would authorize the issuance of the Certificate of Compliance upon receipt of a satisfactory national background check. And, and this uh, Certificate of, Apply of Compliance acknowledges that he's complied with everything except for that final Certificate of Occupancy, and then once that comes in, then he will comply with everything. So who approves the Certificate of Occupancy? occupancy the planning commission i'm sorry who, who approves the certificate of occupancy so that would be the building inspector okay which is uh chief county building and codes who we work in conjunction with okay all right with one of their inspectors but we can approve this without having those those pieces so or, so, de or dependent on those pieces coming in right so the co the abc specifically says that this is apparently a situation that happens a lot when somebody's right. building a new building. And so they said, okay, when we don't have a final CO yet, you can note that in your letter that says they've complied with everything, they just don't have the final CO. So we've got that taken care of in paragraph number two. But what we don't have yet is the background check, the national background check. Okay. And so well, we don't want to hold it up next month. So my opinion is that, that you can approve the issuance of the certificate of compliance mm -hmm. pending satisfactory return of a national background check. And the CO? No, you've got the CO covered on number two, so you don't have to worry about that. So. Okay, all right. So it's just the background checks then, mm -hmm. depending on those coming in. Mm -hmm. Clear. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. I'll make a motion that we approve the certificate of compliance. Um, for the liquor store at uh, 121 B Lubin Hill Road, Kingston Spring. Contingent. Contingent on um, background checks, national and local and, and, and state. Approval of the background checks. Yeah. Is that satisfactory completion of background, national and local background checks? Very good. Do we have a second? Do we have a discussion? When do we have a discussion? Yeah. Okay. Have a discussion. So, what's the requirement uh, for distances between liquor stores? Is the requirement in the state? The only distance requirement is, to my church. knowledge, is the church and School, schools. schools. Okay. We have restrictions on the number of liquor stores, so we're also certifying that they're okay. in compliance with that. Yeah. Because we just have one current. Right? Correct. It is next door. <laughs> okay. Sure. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. All in opposed? No, I can't say actually. The ayes, the yeses have it. Approved. Fifteen E. Motion to approve resolution 22-013, encouraging Williamson County to accept Forest Drive and Forest Road Bridge as a public road and bridge. Um, is this necessary? This, this was requested from the board last month, and um, to uh, Commissioner Clark uh, has some details if, uh, if you'd like to kind of enlighten the board on what's transpired since then, but we do believe that the resolution, yes, is, is going to be beneficial. So. Excellent. The Highway, um, Williamson County Highway Commission did uh, vote it to go through and uh, unanimously, but now it goes on to Williamson County Board of Commissioners. Gotcha. So Wonderful. Great. Okay. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. F. Discussion of the town installed neighborhood signage sponsored by Commissioner Clark. So just quickly, uh, 
Requests for additional signage placed in the town right of way has traditionally come before the board for their approval. So this was submitted by Commissioner Clark. If you want to give some explanation. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, Henry Patterson lives on uh, at 1061 Patterson Drive, and if anyone has gone up or down Patterson Drive, basically up it from um, from Lakeside Drive or down at the bottom of the hill, uh, there is a slope that comes up right before his driveway, and it's basically a blind driveway. And he's almost been hit many times. People that travel up Patterson necessarily don't go 30 miles an hour, necessarily don't go 35 miles an hour. And uh, I've been in and out of his driveway any number of times in the past year, and it is kind of hair-raising to try and get out of there and uh, because people don't know the driveway's there. And uh, he had requested the sign last year, and I apologize to him for not looking into it uh, before this. But in, in my letter, I, I include some things for with estimates of the length of the road and stopping distance and how long it takes a car to stop. And I won't go through all that unless you want me to. But basically, it's just a, a request to have a slow down blind driveway <coughs> somewhere on the right hand side of the road as you go toward Mount Pleasant between 1061 and, or 1071 and 1061, just to get people to slow down before you get to the driveway. Any questions? I don't know how much a sign costs, but I, I don't think it's probably over. $60, $70. Yeah, it should be. We might even have some in stock. The, has that road been the 20 mile an hour, 20 mile per hour limit signs been put on it? No, not, not, yet. not yet. Nor has it been. Around. I think by lowering the speed to 20 would, would help, but um, not that it would be honored. That's for sure. Um, do we have other places in town that might need this special signage also? Uh, there probably are, but no one has approached uh, the town, uh, at least the city hall, or to my knowledge, the board for replacement of any additional signage related to this type of thing. Does the city manager have an opinion on this placement of the sign? I, I think in this particular case, it seems like it would be a, a valuable addition to safety. Uh, I would caution that. Uh, and one of the reasons why this comes before the board rather than uh, it being uh, just a staff decision is because it, the, the downside of this could be that the town of Kingston Springs would be full of signage all over the place from uh, slow children to play to dangerous curves to whatever it might be. So um, that's why rather than having a, a presented on a staff level, I believe it's been traditional that tradition that it comes before the board. What was the cost down? You say 60 Signage is $50, $60. And, and as I said, we might have some in stock already in our area. Okay. Motion okay. approved? Uh, it's just a discussion, correct? Oh. Mm -hmm. All right, we need a motion and a second. No, it's just a discussion, right? Oh, just a discussion. No, it's, we uh, have to get a recommendation. Yes, if we get a recommendation motion from the board to approve us uh, adding signage to the, in this particular case, to the right of way. Recommendation? Recommendation to the. Do we have a second recommendation? No. <laughs> we, uh, I, do we vote on that? No. Motion, Re motion to recommend. Motion to recommend. Second. Motion to recommend blind driveway, slow down sign uh, near 1071 Patterson. 1060 Patterson Drive. Two of them, right? One in each direction? One from each direction or just that one? You can kind of see it from the other Fair direction. Side. You really can. Okay. 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 So we we have, have a second? One. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion, uh, recommendation passes. G, motion to approve resolution 22-014, implementing a policy regarding emergency paid sick leave for COVID-19 related illnesses, testing illnesses, and quarantine. So the past resolution that was uh, approved related to staff COVID time expired in April. But uh, with cases again on the rise, we've had three just within the last month at City Hall uh, alone. Staff requesting this leave to be instated through December 31st of 2022, which would be the end of the year. The resolution has been updated to follow current CDC guidelines. So uh, the past resolutions included 
uh, people that tested positive for COVID-19, as well as people who were indirect exposure to people who tested positive with COVID-19. That second part has been removed, and it just applies to people that have tested positive for COVID-19. Um, there's really no financial impact to the town, um, just like any other kind of illness, um, the additional staff uh, steps in and fills in any gaps by anyone that it's absent for this particular time. Do they have a limit on sick leave now, now? I'm sorry? Do they have a limit on sick leave now? There's no limit on sick leave, but you, depending on the length of your service will depend on how much sick time you actually have. So some people have a lot of sick time. People that have not been here very long don't have much sick time at all. So um, a five week, or I'm sorry, a five day, if you are diagnosed on Saturday or Sunday, um, you're in quarantine for five days, so that's pretty much so a week. We should cover this outside their regular season. Yes. This would be five days directly related okay. to a positive COVID-19 test. That's only for positive test. Okay. Okay. It was right. originally mandated, if you all recall, yeah. in that bevy of stuff that went through when the pandemic first started. Yeah, you're under no mandating more than sunset. Mm -hmm. The staff has recommended that people are sick maybe Okay. Well, it'd be better have them here and have everybody see. <laughs> I was just going to say, too, that since the CDC has lifted, you know, there's pretty much no mask mandate anymore. I wear one every time I go to the store or go out. But since there's no mask mandate, no six foot rule anymore, isn't it just kind of, it seems like everybody's just kind of taking their chances now because we can't, we can't say whether or not anybody's taking any precautions. It's just, it's going to happen. And it seems like a, the flu is going to happen now, and this might happen as well. I think personally the difference is with the flu there's not a quote unquote mandated five day quarantine period associated with it. Whereas with COVID nineteen exposure there is a CDC mandated five day isolation. Sure. So that to me that would be the difference. I I agree and understand your point, but uh, I with someone who has the flu um, if they say they're okay, then I'm going to take their word for it. I'm not going to test them with a thermometer. But if somebody tests positive for, for COVID-19, I'm not going to let them set foot in the office for five days. Or five days if they can present themselves without a fever after the fire. And so that's, to me, that's the difference. Sure. We have a motion to approve. I make a motion we approve the extended through year end. Uh, as John stated, it's for all positive test only. Do you have a second? Yes. I, I want to recommend that you yeah. clarify that there is language in there. It's not just positive tests. It's people who are experiencing symptoms and are awaiting positive tests. So that may or may not make a difference to you, but that language is in there. Noted. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Has and has. Surplus, there is nothing. I'm, I'm yes, sorry. Can there I, was some hate. Sorry to interrupt, but um, I, I just noticed uh, this was a mistake on my part. The agenda that was published and the agenda that was mailed to everyone had item H, which was approval of RFP for the house at 431 okay. Park Street. Um, that I printed uh, in your packet, <coughs> which you have in front of you, a previous uh, draft of the agenda did not include item so we need to back up and include it. So I think you probably, yeah, I would need to do a motion to back up to amend <laughs> the agenda to include item okay. H. I'll make a motion we amend the agenda to include item H. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 My apologies for that. It's changed. H. Proposed project proposal for. 431 Park Street. So the town uh, advertised an RFP for uh, request for proposals for removal of the uh, vacant house at 431 Park Street, which is the uh, property the town recently purchased. Uh, we received one request for proposal back, which is in the information you have in front of you from uh, Chris Stewart for removing the house at uh, this location and moving it to a location on West Kingston Springs, a vacant lot that he owns, um, <clears throat> for it to be used as um, either rental or sold property. Um, 
we've reviewed the back end with our city planner, and the city planner has um, deemed that the plan to move that house and deposit it on the new location is an acceptable plan. Uh, it would meet all setback requirements, uh, and uh, requirements of the lot would accept that structure. So uh, staff is requesting that we um, approve and um, Mr. Stewart's proposal to move this house to a different location. Motion to approve Mr. Stewart's proposal to move the house. Second. I'll make a motion that we move the house. Second. All in favor? Aye. She said she thought you had a motion. motion. No, sorry. <laughs> Do we have a motion? I'm, 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 I'm new at this. You, you did I'm new at this. <laughs> but I took it over for you. Appreciate that. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Motion passes. <coughs> Good luck, Chris. Item 16 surplus. There is none. Any other discussions? I've got a. I've got a. Um, is this a proper time to amend minutes from June? Can, that would have been, already been approved. We can just yeah, we can approve that. I think we've got two up to two years to do it. No, this is June minutes. No, I don't know. Moratorium. I don't talk about it. I, I think we've got two years, but you can. Now I'm trying to think through Robert's rules. Um, you voted previously to approve them, so I think you would have privilege to go back and ask that they be the vote be reconsidered and be amended. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to amend the June June minute minute meeting minutes. Um, at the end of the uh, the meeting, there was a discussion at the very end of the meeting about uh, uh, the Chin Exchange newspaper. And uh, we had discussed putting it on Facebook and the website and social media as our paper of record, and uh, and it was not included in in the, the minutes of the meeting. And uh, I know that the staff was directed to make John aware of that recommendation. I don't know if it ever happened or not, but they were. It was not in the minutes at all, and it was a discussion between all of us and saying that it would be a good idea. to amend the two minutes to include reference to the discussion regarding the Cheatham Exchange newspaper being placed as our paper of record in Facebook, website, and social media. So there need to be a second. Yes. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The amendment has passed. Reminders, the Board of Commissioners Capital Improvement Plan Workshop. It's going to be August 25th at what time? Where? 5.30 here in this room. Right here. City Hall will be closed September 5th for the Labor Day holiday. Make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>